Hi family, welcome to the next edition of the Jedi series. Um, we'll be talking about um, the next Kingdom Kid. Um, today's kind of subject is about being um, being trained, what it, what it is to be a trainer, what it looks like. Um, so it, it's a charge, right? You know, it's like, hey, let's let's do this. Um, Kind of what we're going to look a little bit about is, uh, you know, what does it look like? What what is, what does a bad trainer look like, and what is a good look trainer? And mostly, we're really going to focus on what a good trainer looks like, right? And so, to, to kind of stick with the the, the karate theme uh, of this uh, <laughs> of the series, uh, or not the series, this this uh, lesson, um, you know, we want to talk about sensei, right? Here we've got Mr. Miyagi. He's a sensei. What's a sensei? It's a teacher. You know, literally, what it means. Just a different language, right? You know, and so, and teachers, what do they have? They have students. Um, you know, and a, and a student a student is someone um, who wants to know what the teacher knows, right? You you go to math class to learn what the math teacher has. You know, you don't go to English to learn about math. The math teacher may be able to do, or excuse me, the English teacher may be able to do math, you know, but but that's not, you know, the purpose, right? Um you know, we, we think about too. There's this kind. Of, there can be a, a parent-child dynamic of, of teaching, right? Um, Proverbs twenty-two six talks about the fact that uh, if you train up a child in the way he should go, uh, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, uh, at my work, you know, uh, it, it doesn't have to be uh, hierarchical. At my work. Um, we, we do peer teaching. You know, we have this thing every two weeks uh, called a colloquium where people from different uh, professions, different backgrounds, will, will tell about some of the work they're doing and, and, and talk about it. And sometimes that will stretch um, stretch our work. It, sometimes what they're doing will fit a, a problem that we don't know how to solve. Um, and so we, we can you know, utilize that or we can, you know, maybe they're talking about something that's similar to what we're looking to, to grow in or looking to add to our projects. And so we learn that, right? So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, one person over another. It can be uh, amongst peers, you know. In, in the Bible, we see the, the uh, a relationship of, of Talmudin, of disciples, um, to a rabbi, right? So, uh, not And not just any rabbi, right? A rabbi of, of Shmiha, you know. The, the general uh, teachers of the law, they'd have students, just like you, you'd go to school. Um, the students would come, they'd learn, and they'd go home. Um, however, uh, it says that Jesus says he, cho he chose his disciples to be with him, right? Like, these aren't, these aren't students that just show up for class and then go home. They live with him. Why? Um, because kind of by osmosis, he wanted to deliberately train them, right? He was, he was going to impart based on his example and his teachings, um, you know, the training that he wanted to, to impart on them, like the, the, the growth and whatnot. Like, you know, we see, you know, characters uh, within, like, with Peter grow, right? Like, he's still a very, very verbose man when he's, in, you know, in Acts 22, declaring all the things that um, the Jews did and what Jesus did, right? Um, so he's very, very verbose, very bold, but it has been uh, refined, right, through, through his training with, with Jesus. Uh, uh, likewise, um, you know, Paul talks about having been a student, right? That going through his training, um, in Acts 22, 3, it says, uh, rather Paul says, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilia and brought up in this city. I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. So Paul was trained under Gamaliel and, and so he learned the the law of the ancestors, you know, the Old Testament from Gamaliel. It, it was it was information that he was taking the time to to impart to him. Right, Gamaliel was very very influential. We even see him earlier in, in Acts where he's telling the the council to to watch how they behave towards the disciples um, because you know. If it's of God, there's nothing we can do. Why should we fight against God? But if it's a man, it'll just go away, right? So, um, and, and you see that in, in kind of Paul's, he takes on certain things in, in a similar match fashion. It's like he tries to take care of certain things, but he lets God, you know, sort out other things. Um, you know, so I'm going to start with point one. Point one is a trainer who teaches you to think. Um, 
I think that was a big, a big thing that Gamaliel did for Paul. He taught him to think. Um, in in the, the 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 main two um, Karate movies that I'm uh, Karate Kid movies, you know, um, we have two trainers, right? Uh, in in the next Karate Kid, um, we have Dugan, and, and Dugan is the JROTC commanding officer, and his his teaching style is very very different from Mr. Miyagi, right? Um, and then we also got in the, the the first movie is more what I'm gonna kind of to to liken my lessons to uh, my lesson to um, is, is here we got John Kreese who's the the Cobra Kai um, uh, dojo person <laughs> and you got Mr. again versus Mr. Miyagi um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the movie basically it starts off with um, there's some bully kids that are part of this Cobra Kai dojo that are beating up on a kid named Daniel and um, they're, they're super unruly and you know at one point in time Daniel tries to fight back because he, he learned a little bit through I think the YMCA um, and they just you know beat the tar out of him um, and he ends up having to be to be um, rescued uh, and then Mr. Miyagi goes and takes him to you know to the dojo to the Cobra Kai dojo and says hey you know this is going on and John Kreese kind of just doubled down he's like no big deal like Wait, you know, that's, that, and that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, and so Daniel's like, well, okay, if these kids are going to keep beating me up, you know, Mr. Miyagi, can you teach me to, to fight so I can kick their butts? And Mr. Miyagi's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Not going to happen. Um, and it reminds me, his comments kind of remind me of Romans 12 too. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve that God's will uh, uh, what God's will is, excuse me, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And okay, it's not, I know it's not a direct correlation, but the idea is, is he's like, you know, we're not going to, I'm not going to teach you so that you can be like them, right? Um, the point, point of a teacher uh, in a discipling type relationship is not um, necessarily to, is, is to avoid being like the world, right? Like we're trying to learn to be disciples, right? Um, we spend our whole lives living and thinking uh, unspiritually, right? Um, even after baptism, it's it's not like, you know, you had a fairy godmother that goes, you know, wand, um, you get uh, a, a nice dress, some glass slippers, and you magically, your character has changed and you are now a perfect disciple, right? No, there's there's work that's involved. Um, that's, you know, I, I, I like to think of it kind of like programming, honestly, like we're, we are programmed, right? As a software developer, I, I think... Um, that up to this point, you know, uh, of, uh, of being baptized, you know, we've been, we've been writing this uh, program of our lives, um, and it's got flaws. It's, uh, it's got fundamental flaws because it's based on worldly wisdom, right? Um, just like if you were to look at, at a web page and you'd see, oh, there's a whole bunch of menus, you go to click all those menus and they don't open. Like, obviously something's wrong. Some things aren't necessarily obviously wrong. Right. Um, a lot of times people only see the outside and it's it's what's inside. Right. Our attitudes, how we're thinking um, that is wrong. And, and so that needs to that needs to change, too, just as much. Um, but sometimes it's harder to get at because it, it is hidden and you have to open up about those type of things. And so it's not that we need to, our whole previous life needs to be scrapped. Right. Just like in a, in a program, if there's some bugs, um, you don't scrap the whole program. Um, but rather you go and find those bugs and you address them, right? You, you address those flaws, um, you know, but, but how do you know one that they're, they're flaws and, and, um, what those flaws are and how to fix them? Well, as a disciple, we're going to compare ourselves against God's standard, right? The word that's, those are our, those are our life requirements. You know, like he's got, he's got fundamental principles throughout the scripture, you know, a lot of them we can find in, in, in Proverbs. Of course, in Proverbs, a lot of those, you need wisdom which you, which you grow in or you grow towards uh, in life in order to know how to apply them. You know, 2 Timothy 3.16 um, is, is a great scripture. And I like to sh kind of share this version of it. Here you, you see juxtaposed a left side of the room, right side of the room. It's not super important, but when I grew up, uh, in, the, in the church I grew up, we would sing this song, um, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. And um, you'd have uh, the sides kind of going back and forth, you know, and it'd be all scripture, 
all scripture is God breathed, is God breathed, and is useful for. Remember these four, you know, teaching, class, right, classroom type work. And um, we would kind of draw on like a uh, chalkboard. It would be kind of a hand signal we would, or a motion that we would do. And then rebuking, you bad, you know, parents are, are, are pretty good at that. Hopefully we're not going, you're, you're, you're a terrible person. Right, like that—that's something you know. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about is how to do this correcting. But you bet it's just saying you did something wrong, right? Correcting, go this way. It's the idea of oh, you went left. We need to go right. It's like the GPS redirecting. You know, you made a left, and you're supposed to make a right to go down to wherever your destination was. Um, or like for me yesterday, trying to get to the Bentons, my I'm like I knew what road to turn on. My GPS like no, keep on going, and then it like oh, you missed the turn. I'm like I didn't miss the turn. You told me to turn on the next road. Whatever. We got there. Um, and then training. Uh, give me two more. So it's a it's, uh, motion of doing push-ups. Right? It's, it's that training, you know, going out running for a marathon. It's, it's you, know, I'm, you know, I climb, go climb mountains to prep to climb even bigger mountains. Right? Like, um, but how do we do it? And, and, and what I thought was very interesting, didn't realize, uh, didn't click until much, much later in my life, is that together, though, we say this last line. No, and not just we don't we didn't just uh, sing it, but we sing it the loudest. Like it was, these things are important. This information, you know, that it, you know, we're, it's good for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training. But the emphasis was in righteousness, right? Um, teaching and training, they kind of they seem kind of again the same side, uh, uh, two sides of the same coin. Um, the emphasis, though, again, is is that. It's, it's the teaching, you start with kind of classroom type work and then training, it's this idea of putting it into work. So how do we, how do we teach, how do we train? Um, I think the classical model in my son's school um, is fundamentally how we learn uh, in life. Um, you know, the first thing we do uh, in the school is um, they start learning the vocabulary, right? Um, when, you, when you learn to read, you don't just hand someone the, the book, uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, and say, hey, read. You know, I can't give that to my five-year-old and say, read. I can't give it to Bella, my two-year-old, and say, read, right? It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, we start off with, they got to learn their letters, you know, A, B, C, you know, and they got to learn the, the sounds they make, right? And so, you know, it, the grammar stage, it's, 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 we learn the words, Right? You know, when we're, when we're teaching our babies to speak, we say, you know, we teach them mom, dad, bottle, milk. You know, um, uh, eventually, they, as they grow a little bit older, we teach them colors, red, orange, green, blue. Um, you know, uh, and then we start teaching, you know, as, we, as they go into Bible lessons, you know, like Bella's been in Kids Kingdom. She maybe doesn't necessarily, you know, understand, but she's hearing the words God and Adam and Eve and and. Moses and Ruth and David and Mary and Jesus and Holy Spirit. Um, she's hearing about places, you know, the Garden of Eden, Egypt, Dead Sea, Jordan River, Sea of Galilee. She's, she's hearing that, you know, from her parents, you know, uh, you know hugs, kisses, um, you know, love, you know, be kind, forgive, um, be thankful. Um, uh, eventually as she gets older, we'll teach them, you know, more things like, you know, peace versus cruelty, um, uh, mercy and grace versus like envy and strife. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's the, learning the words that go along with it. Um, and then we move on kind of to, you know, the next stage, which is, you know, learning to kind of sort and compare. And again, you know, being able to put, um, mercy and grace in the good category, envy and strife in the bad category, uh, and being able to like you know fundamentally understand those things and have conversations about it, right? Like, you know, was that very nice to your sister? No. Why wasn't that very nice? Well, you know, when I took it away, I hurt her feelings. You know, those type of dialogues, right? So it's the dialectic uh, series, and, and then ultimately we get to the point where we're in a subject where we learn um, how to solve a problem, right? Um, you learn, learn early on, hopefully, uh, with maybe like with paint, that um, if you take red and blue, you mix them together, you get purple, because yeah, maybe you don't have purple, right? But you can get it by having those two colors. And I'll just, I'll show this figure real quick. Um, this is uh, the, the kind of color space. And um, if you go along the curve, 
um, that, you know, and it's got numbers around it uh, along that, that curve, you know, 620 down to, to 460. It's the, the wavelength of light. Uh, the colors that are right against that line are the actual colors that exist. Um, and yet, we see many more colors, right? You can see that perception. So you can even see as you move from blue to red, you get to purple, right? And purple is my favorite color, but it doesn't actually exist. But yet we can perceive it, right? Um, you know, uh, you get problems sometimes where, you know, someone sees one, the dress one color and the other, if you guys remember that from a couple of years ago. And that has to do more with this. This principle is that uh, we use three colors on our screens, right? Um, uh, uh, blue, red, and green. And that only allows us to define a, a portion of the, the color space that our eyes can actually perceive. And so a lot of times that means when we, when we see it on a screen, our brains interpret it differently, which is why you get those different color perceptions of the dress or there was some other object I remember a bit uh, back that, that people were looking at. Um, but the thing is, is that once we have the grammar to talk about what colors are, and the color space and stuff like that. Then we can start talking about this idea of perception and, and understand, right? Uh, as as a trainer, we, we recognize that our our category, our, our our subject rather, like you know, instead of being in school and being in math class and learning math or in English class or in English, we are disciples and we're learning discipleship, right? That's our subject. That's our given. And so we we learn the fundamental things, but we need to get to that that third stage where we can actually. Um, utilize it. Like I said earlier, you know, having proverbs, um, proverbs are great and all, um, if you know how to use them. Uh, again, there's, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it basically says, you, uh, there's two scriptures like right next to each other. It says, answer a fool according to his folly and, um, or else he'll think he's wise. Uh, you know, and then like it turns it around and immediately it says, or, you know, and I can't, maybe I'm getting the order wrong, but it's like, then it says, answer a fool according to his folly and, and he will, you know, like run away or whatever. The point is, is like, it's the opposite. It's like, you either need to answer them or not. And it's like, you got to kind of look at the thing. It's like, if they're in a bad place and you're, you know, they're, they're off all off hinged and you start answering, you know, telling them, you know, that's not the right thing, you know, especially if you don't do it the right way, it's like, it's not going to do anything. Right. On the other hand, if they just don't know they're making a mistake and you come about, about it and say, Hey, you know, like if you do that, you're going to hurt yourself. Oh, thank you. Right. Like, two different things, but it takes the wisdom that, that comes with, you know, having exercised some of these principles that we learn to, to recognize that. You know, kind of our, our second uh, thing is to, when we're in training is we need to make sure we're doing it in righteousness. Um, I, I love the way that Gordon Ferguson talks about it in his book, uh, The Power of Discipling. He, he says, the golden rule is golden. All right, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, you. Um, uh, trail life motto has in it it says uh, treat others as I want to be treated you know we we must you know there, there's times where um, you know we're training new things right we haven't done it before right and so we want to make sure that you know they feel encouraged um, that they're growing that way um, sometimes training is you know removing you know um, bad uh, uh, um, Bad habits, right? You know, uh, when you're when uh, Ed was telling me a little bit about him learning to 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 do hurdles, right? You you train a particular way because you you naturally don't want to move your legs that particular way, and so you break those habits. Again, it's not necessarily that you're 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 bad, but your coach is going to drill into you. No, nope, don't do it like that. Do it like this. You know, the, the correction, right? Um, but we got to make sure that as disciples, when we we are helping people through their lives. That when we are correcting them, uh, that we aren't harsh, um, and and I guess this really isn't limited to disciples. This uh, this can be our children. This is can, this can be our coworkers. Uh, let's not do it with harshness. Proverbs fifteen one says, "A gentle answer turns away wrath, um, but a, but a harsh word stirs up anger." If we start off with with being harsh, they, they shut down, right? You get that that fight, flight, or freeze reaction that happens, you know. And and generally, it's in one ear, out the other. 
You know, they, they may turn around and just start yelling back at you if they're, if they're the fight type deal. They may just, you know, walk away or they just freeze and they, they don't hear you. And you they, they may appear present, but they're not because they shut down because of how we've approached it, right? And, and a lot of times this means um, taking a look at ourselves. Like, where are we at, right? Like, if, if we feel a quick reaction coming out of us, what is it that's going on in our own heart? And sometimes we need to deal with that first, Right? Um, but if, if we're calm, if we're, if we're collected we're, and we're just approaching it, uh, approaching the person and ready to talk to them, sometimes, you know, the easiest way to do it is just to let scriptures do the talking, right? Um, you know, uh, again, sometimes hearing, even just us reading it, uh, may not be as effective. Um, I think about when I was studying the Bible, you know, um, when they were showing me, uh, the scriptures, a lot of times what they would ask is like, well, what, is this, what does this mean to you? What does this say to you, right? Like, I, I hope when I do studies, I, I ask the same question the same way. Because if I give the answer, it's not as important or as impactful. It was super impactful for me to read some of these scriptures and realize at the end of my first study, I wasn't a disciple. Like, I had to admit that to myself, and that was really hard. Um, uh, had they come up and say, well, you know, based on this, you're not a disciple. I don't know if I would have heard it. They would have been right. Uh, but I don't think I would have heard it. There are other times, too, when we're, when we're doing training that, you know, like, it just doesn't go well. You know, it's like, maybe um, I, we don't talk the same language, right? And I don't mean, like, you know, <laughs> Greek versus English, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm more of, like, I, I think in certain terms, right? I'm very, very concrete. I'm not um, super emotional uh, in, in my language. Well, I'm not super, I, <laughs> I repress a lot of my emotions. I try not to, amen. But, you know, I, I'm growing in that. But I just, emotion is not a lot of part of my language. I, I'm, I'm very, you know, kind of fact oriented. And so if someone comes into me and talks to me a lot about feelings, it's not going to do as much of an impact for me. So, you know, let's say I'm having a conversation with Andrew uh, and it's just not going well. And Andrew's like, man, I'm just, it's, I'm not getting through to Dan. Um, he might go seek some advice, right? Like, but we got to watch how we do that too, right? Because again, we want to be righteous in how we, we are interacting with our brothers and sisters. And so if Andrew goes to Ed, um, you know, he's got to think about like, why, why am I sharing? And it's like, I'm trying to reconcile the relationship with Dan. Yeah, that's the way to go. You know, it's kind of the first thing to think about why, why, you know, like if I'm just trying to talk, you know, if Andrew just going to, to Ed to badmouth me, like that's, that's, that's no going. I'm not saying this has ever happened. I want, I want to clarify this. this is not, as far as I know, this has never happened. Um, but you know, if, if that were the case, you know, amen. Then, and then it's like, okay, if he's, if he's sharing to Ed, you know, is that sharing going intended to benefit me? And again, like if he see, if he sees something that I need to grow in, maybe he you know he he saw me being harsh with my son because I'm imperfect and I do that every once in a while. I, I my wife calls me on it. Um, then amen, like that is a great reason to go talk to Ed. Say, hey, how do I help Dan? You know, deal with Jaden better. Um, you know, is is going to Ed? You know, gonna benefit benefit him right when he's sharing with ed you know it's like oh well and and, and maybe you know sometimes I, I back up a little bit sometimes when we make these conversations if we do go to other people we need to keep it fairly generic right like and that's of course you know we have permissions like hey i'm gonna go seek advice or whatever like sometimes we we keep want to keep it super generic uh, and other times it can be specific and again that kind of comes down to a, a wisdom thing but again it's it's how is it benefiting people you know um and then ultimately, I think, you know, you think about, the, again, the golden rule, do unto others as you have them do unto you. So then the question is in the reverse. If the roles were reversed, if Andrew had felt that, you know, or if, if Andrew perceived that had it been the roles reversed, right? Like had he been the one on the, the, the downside and I'm the one seeking advice, should I go seek advice? Would he feel good with me doing that? If he does, then, then amen, go do that. Don't let it become gossip. Don't be like, oh, he's so terrible, this, that, and the other, and just tell you, like, it, it's got to be constructive, right? We're heading towards a particular direction. But if he's if he's on and up and up, if he's, if he's acting righteous, he's really looking out for my heart and, and for, you know, my son's heart, right? Like, again, in my examples, I was being harsh with my son. He's looking out for the heart of my son to make sure that he isn't, he doesn't, it doesn't turn into a heart of stone, that he's not 
going to be open and receptive to God working in his life because dad, who claims to be a disciple, uh, acts like a terrible, horrible, you know, horrendous man. Like, I don't want my son, I don't want that to be my son's excuse not to come to church because I was my example and how I behaved towards him was not that. I would want Andrew and Ed or other brothers and sisters in my life to want to help me to grow in that. But in the end, we got to realize that it's not us, right? We aren't the ones ultimately going to make a change in our hearts um, or in their hearts and as, as we're, we're, we're reaching out to them, right? It's, it's God and the Holy Spirit and that, and that person, right? They have to be open and willing um, to allow the Holy Spirit to change their lives. So the third point that I want to bring up is um, we need to make sure we leave room for God. So what does it mean to leave room for God? Uh, my, kind of the point is, is like, we don't need to work out every last detail, you know. Um, the author says, you know, most arguments are stupid. And, and I guess argument, yes. I mean, like disagreements, sometimes we have disagreements. But, you know, like, I come from one background, you guys come from another. We're not necessarily going to start at the same spot, right? So, you know, <laughs> we need to come to a, a, a location, a co-location a lot of times when we're, we're, you know, where do we want to meet for church, right? Like when we were looking for a new facility, we kind of had to come to, to a quorum on that, right? Um, but, you know, Romans 14 talks about the fact that there are disputable matters and there's some things that's like, okay, if we're not going to see, see eye to eye on everything, and, and that's okay, you know, certainly we don't have, you know, markets, you know, we can't go to, to Yolks and have the option to choose, you know, beef or beef sacrifice to a God. Like that's not our world, right? But there are, there are plenty of other things in our lives um, that are disputable matters uh, that we can, we can just avoid. We can talk about it, uh, but if it gets to the point where it becomes divisive, we, we don't need to talk about it. It doesn't need, but and it also, it comes down to, it's like, as long as my heart is in the right place, right? That, you know, we're good to go. Like, it, it's not something we need to to cross every little bridge so that we all, we're not, we're not looking to become uniform with one another. We're looking to become uniform with Christ, right? Like that's our standard. Again, as long as we're approaching that, that, that standard, God's standard, God's scripture, um, that's, that's our direction we need to be going. You know, it's, it's not enough to, to just avoid harsh words either when we're having these conversations, right? Again, we can have these conversations, we can have these disagreements, um, and we can head towards, uh, towards some type of, uh, of unity, um, but we need to be kind, right? Again, the scripture uh, that I read earlier, Proverbs 15, 1 says, a, a gentle word turns away wrath. Uh, sometimes it's translated a kind word. You know, it's, it's, it's proactive, not just, you know, a proactive in having good um, vocabulary, right? Like, you know, we use gentle words, we, we are, are trying to coax the person to see what the scriptures are saying. You know, whether in, when, when we're, we're dealing with training, whether we're the trainer or the trainee, we got to remember that, again, the principles we're being taught or the principles we are teaching shouldn't be ours, hopefully aren't ours, you know, again, on the, on the receiving end, but are, are God's, right? Um, like I mentioned, sometimes it's just having, you know, have the, the person that you're training, read the scripture so that it has a great impact because then it's the, the scriptures that are putting the emphasis um, on what needs to, what that person needs to see. And it's the Holy Spirit has uh, a little bit easier time, again, sometimes, it depends on where we're at, um, working on our heart to help us see how we need to grow. And during training, uh, we, were, <laughs> we need to remember that uh, we as trainers... Um, it, it's, it's not our place to change their lives. It, we are God's tool that have been placed into one another's lives to aid in that development, right? To aid our brothers and sisters towards being the best disciples we can be. Um, I, I actually want to show you a clip from, um, the, the first Karate Kid movie. Um, I cut out certain parts of it. Um, so I'm going to give you an intro to the clip, but because there's a bunch of cussing, um, but uh, essentially, uh, Daniel comes up to Mr. Miyagi after working for him for about four days and says, you haven't taught me anything. I, you're treating me like a slave and you've taught me nothing. Um, you know, I've been sanding decks, waxing cars, painting houses, painting a fence. 
I haven't learned anything. So we'll, we'll go to this clip real quick. Say the floor. Stand up. Show me Sandoflora. 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 Big soccer. Sandoflora. Sandoflora. Now show me wax on, wax off. Aye. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Hey, wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Concentrate. Look in my eye. Lock a hand. Thumb inside. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Wax on. Wax off. Show me paint the fence. Up, down. Up, down, up, down, other side, look eye, always look eye. Show me paint the house, side, side. Lock wrist, side, 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 side. Yes. Show me wax on, wax off. Get! 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 That! Show me pen to fence. Hey! Hey! This! This! Show me side to side. Yes! 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 Show me sand of floor. Hey! 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 I always look I come back tomorrow. So I, I want to kind of look at Daniel's face right now. Um, he just had this encounter with Mr. Miyagi where he all of a sudden realizes that all these little pieces kind of built up into a much larger body of work, right? Kind of the, I'll say the practicals that he he all of a sudden came to understand through Mr. Miyagi working slowly. Like he wasn't, he was never harsh when he gave him the the the, the job of waxing or sanding or painting. Right? He was just like, just do this. And when Daniel didn't see it, he was you know, he's a little gruff. You know, as a disciple, I don't think I would. I would hope I wouldn't talk like that, though I do recognize that certainly with my son I do that. And again, my wife is helping with me grow on that. But, you know, all of a sudden Daniel realizes that this whole time he's been practicing the fundamentals. You know, he wanted to do the fancy things. He wanted to be able to get to the point where he was this great karate guy. But he wasn't seeing any progress because he, was, he wasn't realizing that he was doing the, the, the groundwork, right? He was laying that foundation. Um, you know, Bruce Lee talks about, uh, or has a quote rather, that says, you know, I fear... Not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. It's this idea of if we practice over and over and over, we will grow and it'll become part of us. I think about um, uh, a sort of unfortunate event that happened in my, in my household when I was growing up is that my brother um, was being super disrespectful and kind of uppity at my mom and um, he, he came at me and um, I don't remember the whole thing. I just remember looking at him, he coming towards me, and the next thing I remember, he's on the ground and I have him locked out. You know, not the greatest, you know, event of my life. But the thing is I had I had wrestled for four years. And it had gotten to the point where it was so automatic that when he made the particular move, I took him down. I did you know a wrestling takedown of my brother. And I didn't think about it. It just happened. It became automatic. And so if we as disciples are looking at things like, you know, Galatians, where we're looking at the fruit of the spirit and we're, we're focusing on that and, and thinking about that and praying about that. And we're trying to implement in our lives. 
if we over and over and over as we practice, it'll start becoming part of our lives such that we will be kind, actually. We will, we will, build, will we be patient. We will be self-controlled because we've been practicing it more often. Or we will, we will, we will exhibit those uh, attributes more often because we've practiced them than if we just read about them. Uh, you know, we need to learn to stand before we can learn to fly. Again, it's this idea of he had to learn to do the fundamental parts and then all of a sudden at the end, you know, of that little scene, Mr. Miyagi goes, goes to town, doesn't tell him what to do. He just starts, you know, punching and kicking at him. And Daniel knows it, has figured out through this, this repertoire, this is what he's supposed to do. You know, early on, later, a little bit later after this, you know, he sees uh, Mr. Miyagi doing the crane kick, the famous crane kick. Um, and he wanted to do it too. But again, if he, if he didn't, uh, he couldn't get to the point of even practicing it. And even when he first started practicing, he couldn't do it because he didn't have the balance. He didn't have the fundamentals in place. And so we need to recognize, too, that sometimes we want to get to this great place of being a, maybe a great teacher or a, a great uh, great at you know studying the Bible with people. Um, but one, it's just a matter of getting in those studies and being part of that so that we can learn to do it and we build the skills. And as we get um, further down the road in life and we've done you know, a dozen, two dozen, four dozen, whatever studies, it will we'll start getting better at it, right? Well, again, this is where wisdom comes in too. It's sometimes it's, it's, it's having the knowledge is great, but being able to have it, uh, have the opportunity to have applied it dozens of times and seeing, okay, I, I know when it works <laughs> this particular way and I know when it doesn't. Uh, you, you know, I can't read people super well if I don't spend the time thinking about it, right? Like, is that person mad? Is that person not mad? How do I approach um, Ed when I have this type of situation? How do I approach my wife in this type of situation? Like, if I don't attempt it, if I don't practice it, I can't get better at it. Another thing um, that this movie talks about is, like, you can't learn karate from books, right? The books will only take you so far. You can, you can learn, right? You can get that information. But until you start applying it, again, he could have... He could have studied a thousand books on how to do the crane kick. But if he didn't get out there and actually stand on the log and work on the balancing and work on the, the, the kick itself, there was no, no growth that was going to occur. And, and lastly, um, belts don't matter, or, or titles in our case don't matter. Um, you know, Daniel asks uh, Mr. Miyagi at some point in the movie, you know, what, what belt are you? Right, expecting him to say black belt, right? Like that he's this good, you know, really good uh, karate um, implementer. I can't think of the word. Anyways, he's good at karate. Uh, and so, but, but he, he's taken aback by Mr. Miyagi's uh, response, which is he says, Canvas, JC Penny, 398, you like? <laughs> you know, as, as he's holding his belt, you know, showing him his nice, you know, uh, canvas belt. It which totally blows Daniel's mind. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> and, he, and he says, you know, karate is here and here, not the belt, right? So it's it's not our title, disciple, that matters. It's what's in our heart and what's in our mind. If we've allowed the Holy Spirit to, to uh, you know, change our lives, to change our mind, to change our heart, to make a fundamental change, and we've, we've practiced that, um, that's what matters. You know, we don't need to be uh, titled, you know, great preacher, great teacher, um, whatever, like, we don't, we don't need those type of titles. <laughs> the title that matters is that we are children of God. And that really, in the end, even with those titles, those additional titles, right? Like, it doesn't mean anything in the end, because we're going to be judged on ourselves, and on how we've, we've gone after becoming, um, what God has wanted us to do. I, I, I should have written this scripture down. I, I don't remember what the reference is. Um, but there's one that talks about it. It's like, as teachers, we're going to be held more accountable. I, I think that even goes with a little bit of being parents. Like, you know, if I don't take the time to make sure that I'm, I'm teaching my kids right, like, I'm going to be held, held towards that. And and we, we as disciples, we want to make sure that, like, God really is the ultimate... Um, ultimate end goal for these relationships. Again, it's like, I'm not trying to change or train people to be more like me. I'm trying to change them, trying to not change. I'm trying to train 
people to be more like Christ. Um, so as a closeout, you know, we talked about today, you know, as a trainer, um, we need to teach teach other disciples to think, right? To, to bring ourselves in a line with the standard that is our is God's scripture. Um, but we need to do so in, in a righteous manner. And we need to leave room for God. Because God is the one who's going to make the ultimate impact. You know, again, we are, we are God's tool in each other's lives. So that is how we make the next karate, or sorry, the next kingdom kid.